You would state your name and affiliation when asking your question. Appreciate that. Hey, Carly. <laughs> That's a good question. How are you? Congratulations. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, we'll uh, begin with uh, an opening statement from Coach and then go to uh, questions for the athletes. Uh, Coach Fisher. The opening statement is, uh, you know, this is a very experienced team that has gotten better every year and has worked really hard to be in this position. So we're excited to be here and um, ready to get started. Okay, we'll take questions for uh, Kayla and Kinaza. If you raise your hand, we have a mic holder. Lee Feinswag from VolleyballMag.com. Kayla, what is your injury and how bad is it? And could you, could you tell us what's going on? No comment. But um, I, I can practice. Um, and every day uh, closer to game time, I get to do a little bit more. That's all. OK, anything else? Anyone else? Go here to the left. Uh, Lincoln O'Neill, Omaha World Herald. What does it mean to kind of be here? Has it sunken in yet that you're in the Final Four uh, and just dreams coming true? How, how are you feeling entering this weekend? Um, mostly just feeling grateful. I think, you know, we both chose to come back an extra year, and even then we weren't, we couldn't have expected this, right? So um, just feeling a lot of gratitude. And just staying present, I think those are the main two things. Um, and then just feeling confident, you know, like we know that we're good enough to be here. We know we deserve to be here. So playing with that confidence going through is going to be important. Kayla, would you answer that as well? Sure. Um, ditto that. Um, it's a special group that we have here. Um, I think we've had to kind of force ourselves to, to let the moment sink in and be really grateful um, because we do know that we deserve to be here and we've worked really hard to be here throughout our career here. And so, um, you know, uh, beating Purdue at home, we kind of had to take a second to appreciate the crowd, appreciate all the fans behind us. And, uh, but then again, at the same time, you don't want to take it in too much, right? You want to you be grateful for where you're at, but we're really motivated to keep it going. All right. Uh, Chuck Kurtai, Volleyball Magazine. Uh, Dan, from an X's and O's standpoint, uh, what challenges does Nebraska present for your team? You know, it's, it's a stylistic um, a couple things. One is I think both teams are strong in certain paths. I think the numbers show that. Um, so that'll be an interesting battle. And then I think it, in transition, w you know, we're a little bit more aggressive than they are. They, and they're a little bit, uh, they play it safe. And so um, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, that battle a little bit. OK. For both or either players, whatever you got. So when practice began in the summer and Lekator and Serena joined the team and you, and you began, what was the transition period like if there was one, introducing two new players to your group and you know, any adjustments or how seamless did that go? Um, I mean, they were both really good coming in. That's that's why they came here. Um, and I think seeing that made us just so much more excited for them to be a part of our team because we knew that under our coaching staff and within our culture, they would get even better. Um, you know, and obviously there was a transition period, but I don't think it was rough as much as this. There was just a lot of growing. 
Um, and they're both really good people, which also made it easy, right? It's, it's easy to work for them. They let us push them. They let us hold them accountable. They also push us. They also hold us accountable. So they fit really well into our culture, for sure. OK, back left. Matt Foster, KETV Omaha. Um, Coach, is there any concern with the difference in experience with this being the program's first year for Nebraska, it's their 16th in the Final Four? No. OK, anybody else? Any other questions up here in front? Yeah, uh, Craig Meyer at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette for, uh, for Chi and for Kayla. I don't know how much I've talked with, uh, with you all about this in the past, but being from California, being from Houston, what was it? I, I mean, what ultimately drew you all to Pitt? You know, what kind of, what appealed about that program, about that school to you? This guy. Um, this guy and the coaching staff as a as a whole, um, you know, when you when you talk to them, when you come to campus, uh, you realize what a family they are, and how much love they have for each other, and how that love extends then into the girls, and then how much the girls love each other. And I mean, it's it's hard to, especially if you're moving across the country, moving away from home, to not want to go to a place that has a sense of home, has a sense of family, um, and so. Absolutely, the people was immediately what, what drew me in. And it's been, it's held true ever since day one and the love has just grown even more. Um, so for me, it was just kind of like the perfect school. Like it was a school where I didn't have to give anything up. Obviously, we play volleyball at a high level. Um, it's in a city. I love the city of Pittsburgh. I didn't want to go to a school in the middle of nowhere. So I like that part of it. Um, and it's a good school. And for me, academics is really important, so I didn't have to give any of that up. Um, the team loves each other. The coaches care about us as people, and also they just know the game really well. So they're knowledgeable, but they're also personable, which is really important. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time together, so being around people that you care about is really important. So it was just a situation where I didn't have to give anything up. The one negative is that it's cold, and I got over that. <laughs> over the course of your time at Pitt, you all have played in some High stakes games, I guess high pressure situations. How do you mentally prepare for what y'all are gonna walk into or I guess encounter tomorrow on that kind of a stage on national TV for what will probably be a sold out crowd? Well, we work a lot. We have um, a sports psychologist. We work a lot with uh, him and he helps us kind of prepare for those moments. And then at the same time, um, you know, we're thinking a lot, okay, this, we probably, we're not gonna have really a home court advantage. We're not gonna have um, our normal crowd, our intimate environment in the field house like we're used to and just being aware of that and making sure that we focus on our vibe and who we are as a team and letting the outside noise um, not distract us will be really important. And just um, remembering that we, we want to be the aggressive team. We want to be um, like on the hunt. We want to be our first foot forward um, through it all. And so um, knowing that the crowd uh, could be noisy, loud, maybe distracted, not always cheering for us, um, and bigger than we've ever played for, it's going to be really important to just hone into who we are in our team and the voices that we hear closest to us. All right. For, for both players, and you made out this about your teammates as well, are you guys friends with former high school teammates, club teammates, regional teammates, national teams, with any of the other players in this Final Four? Um, us, personally, um, no. Um, some of our other teammates are very close and past teammates with some of the other girls in the Final Four. Um, I know some girls on Louisville just and some of the girls on other teams just from doing stuff with the collegiate team over the summer um, but a couple other of our teammates have some good friends any names anybody can think of can no? uh, Lekator used to play with Kayla from Nebraska mm -hmm. and Lexis um, old high school teammate plays also for Nebraska mm -hmm. and I believe and Ali Bainhorst played oh, yeah. it Houston Juniors, which is the club I played at. So I kind of know Ali. Good. That's, thank you. Yeah. Saves a lot of research. <laughs> Dan, Dan, did you recruit either Serena or Lekator when they were juniors? No, I didn't even know about Lekator 
And I tried to recruit Serena, and then that was right when I was reaching out as she went on a visit to Penn State and <laughs> was a little late getting in. Um, and But uh worked out the way it was supposed to. Dan, can you uh, talk about uh, Rachel Fairbanks' development? Over the last month or so, she's really raised her numbers. What was it that she showed that you said, hey, we need to get this young lady some more touches? Well, there was, it was a combination of a couple things. Um, you know, she, she, you know, I never, when I recruited her, I didn't really, she told me she touched 10 feet. I didn't really believe it. I just, I didn't think she'd really be a hitter. And then at one point in the year, I think she touched 10, three and a half or 10, four. And, mm -hmm. and I said, wow, I guess maybe we should, uh, and she has a pretty good arm and she was getting stronger. She's, she's physically more mature than when she showed up uh, in the summer. So she was maturing, uh, you know, just becoming a more powerful player. It was higher. And then also um, was be more, becoming more technical as a setter. Uh, and so then, you know, she's basically about four months in. And so I, I think it's just all the teaching we've been doing kind of, uh, she just settled in. Combine that with, you know, some injuries to Kylie. And so she was thrust in a role and, and um, has, has really, uh, has has really done great, so we're we're thrilled for. Her. Okay, we're on the left. Dan, what have you seen from Nebraska's forward defense in your study with film this week too? And how do you game plan to attack their defense? We um, we, we plan on doing what we always do, which is trying to hit the ball as hard as we possibly can, as much times as we can. So I think if we if we tip a lot, they're gonna they're gonna do a good job against us. Was there anything you saw from Nebraska's floor defense that you haven't seen or compares to what you have seen this year? I think they're comparable defensively to us or Louisville. We've played very good defensive teams. Um, you know, it's uh, much respect, but yeah, we're, we're, we're not shifting around a ton based on their back row defense, that's for sure. Okay, front left. Dan, with uh, Chiamaka, with her being fr uh, from uh, from Columbus, obviously with the Final Four being here, I was curious with the past few days, especially once you all booked your ticket here, um, what those past few days have kind of been like for her getting to go on this stage and doing so at home? You know, I, I haven't even asked her. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's, uh, you know, the one thing I can say about Chia is sometimes she needs some encouragement um, in practice to, get, to, to, to bring it all. Uh, she, she does not need encouragement as the stage gets bigger. She loves to compete. Uh, she's definitely a gamer, so I'm, I'm sure she's very excited and will be ready. I, I guess what, if at all, do you remember about like the first times that you saw her play and about her, uh, about her overall recruitment? So, um, Chia was, um, was one of the first, you know, players that I remember thinking, we got somebody like maybe like above where we were as a program at the time and thinking, hey, we better make sure we make her feel loved through the whole recruiting process so, we, so someone doesn't come in and poach her. Um, so we felt like we had kind of a, someone people didn't really know about at the time. Sorry, uh, uh, one follow-up on that. Like what steps do you have to take there where, you know, to, to kind of show a recruit? How uh, how much you care, and I guess how much of a priority they are for y'all. Well, yeah, with her, it's in volleyball. A lot of times, there's a verbal commit. Sometimes a year before they actually sign. So it's just making sure that after that commitment, you're you're still showing interest and um, basically that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, we're gonna switch over to Zoom and see if we have any questions on Zoom. Thank you, Dan. There are no questions at this time. If someone does have a question and wants to raise their hand, we can go ahead and take that. But at this time, there are no hands raised online. Okay. All right. One more here. Dan, I, I know the stock answers, but for you personally to get to this point and considering everything that you've been through to get here to this far and this stage, what does it mean to you personally as a person and a coach? <laughs> Um, it, it means a lot. I don't know how to put it into words, but um, it, it's I, what I've said before is what I what I mean is that 
when I took the job, I never envisioned us being here. Um, I, I didn't know if it was possible, but I knew. But that being said, the collection of talent I had um, going into this season, I, I felt like we could do it. And so um, it's really nice in life to, <coughs> you know, to ach achieve goals. And so, um, yeah, I feel really, really grateful, really blessed, grateful to all the people that have supported me, the university, my, my wife and family. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a big moment. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.